Hello Desert Bearhawk fans, we're back in the shop. Today we got a video, we're going to be showing you um, the new brake that I just bought from Harbor Freight and uh, give a little, uh, little tutorial on how it works, what a brake is, what it does, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to modify this brake to work for aircraft building for our purposes and what we're using it for. I believe that this brake was intended for uh, car guys and AC guys that make sheet metal parts for their race cars or for air conditioning systems. Um, it's, uh, it's a brake and it's not suitable as it sits right now for making aircraft parts but we're gonna we're gonna fix that. So anyways as you know uh, I've been struggling with bending the um, these little these little uh, attach fittings and and stiffeners and stuff for the wing of the Bearhawk and the problem I've been having is I can't get a consistent bend out of uh, the brakes that I have access to. I have access to three brakes at work but all three of them are fairly wore out and or difficult to ac access or both actually it's both and uh, they're gonna need a lot of adjustment and fooling with and I just don't have time to fool with it and I figured well it's about time I ponied up and spent a few bucks to get a brake to have in the shop that I can use at will and once we get done modifying it, I believe that it will be uh, very useful here while we build the airplane. So we're going to show you how we do that. But uh, before we do that, oh, and I'll tell you, I picked it up at Harbor Freight. I picked up this brake, and I got two of these toggle clamps. Um, and you'll see these in a coming up video, what I'm going to use those for. But I got two toggle clamps and the brake using my 20% off coupon that you all should get if you sign up for Harbor Freight. I was out the door for 211 bucks with tax and everything, so not bad. It's a 36-inch brake. It's not super heavy duty. It's not going to bend 60 thousandths, but uh, it will do the 32 that we need for this project, and um, maybe a little heavier if we finesse it, but certainly we'll get the 32 thousandths done that we need for this project. So I'm going to show you real quick how a brake works, and then um, then we're going to show you how we're going to modify it. So I'm going to flip this over now and we're going to see if I can, I'm going to flip my viewfinder over so I can walk around and monitor the video so hopefully I can see what's going on. See where my hands are. Okay, so there's not a lot of moving parts in a brake. You have um, you have the bending, the piece that moves to bend the material. I don't know what they call this. Um, an the anvil maybe, I don't know. I'm sure there's, a, I'm sure there's some some sheet metal guy out there that knows exactly what this piece is called. But it's the piece that rotates up and down to bend the material. And then you have the shoe. I believe this is called the shoe. Everyone calls it the shoe, so I'm going to call it the shoe as well. And this piece pinches the metal down in the jaws here. And you can see I just opened it. And uh, it pinches the material in between this jaw and the base of the machine and holds it in place. And then this piece rotates up and down and bends it. So the only moving parts really on this are the um, anvil or whatever we're going to call this piece and then the, sh the shoe itself moves up and down via these handles right here on the side. There's a handle on either side and they're, they're on eccentrics which means it's it's not it's a round circle but the pickoff points off center so when it rotates around it kind of does that deal if I'm making any sense and locks it. So this thing here and you can I don't know if you can see it too well. Let's see if we can zoom in. It kind of, oh, there we go. It kind of rotates around and locks it down. It's on an eccentric. So that's how you pinch the material in there. And then once the material's pinched in where you want the bend to be, you simply lift up the anvil and you bend it. And you can bend it to, you know, 90 or even a little further. It looks like it goes to maybe 120 degrees or so and um, bend the material. So that's all well and good. And this uh, appears to be working fairly well, this brake, as far as mechanically. I'm taking it all apart. Um, we're actually gonna, I'm gonna remove this piece off of the brake and we're gonna take this to a machine shop and we're gonna modify it. But um, all the parts, I mean, it's not super precision, but it's Harbor Freight, it's 211 bucks, so you get what you get. So basically, what, ha what the reason we need to modify this brake is, and this is a piece of 32 thousandths, or excuse me, 25, pretty, pretty lightweight material in the grand scheme of things. And I'll show you first of all what it does. So you know, the operator brake, you you open up the jaw, 
you slide in your material, you lock the jaw down, so now it's locked in there, this can't move out. And then you simply grab the uh, anvil or the bending part of it and you rotate it up like so. And when you're done, you now have you now have a, a bend in your material. But if you look real closely, let me peel this plastic away. If you look real closely at this bend, you'll see that that corner is really sharp right there. It's bending really hard right on the 90. And uh, if you're making sheet metal ducts for air conditioning system, you're good. If you're making parts for your race car that you're going to take out on the oval track on Saturday night and beat the ever-living hell out of and who cares, you're good. But if you're making parts to hold an airplane together and you do that, you're bad. And uh, not only is it thumbs down, but it's probably going to be airplane down and you're going to be in it. So you don't want to do that. And the reason is, is watch what, watch what happens. I, I'm pretty sure this will, this will snap right off if I just put a little bit of pressure on it. Now, I didn't quite work hard in it enough, in the, but it's also not 90. So to drive home my point, I will bend another one to 90. So Dave's bebopping along and he bends his piece to 90 or so. You can see, and then if I just flex it back just a little bit, it breaks right off. And the reason it breaks is because that joint was work hardened and probably cracked too. And that's what allowed that to break. It puts stress right there on there, and you could see it broke right on the line. So we don't want that. What we want in our piece, and where to go, what we want is we want to bend radius we want a radius bend as you can see here that's what we're looking for when we bend our material unfortunately the jaws of this break and I'm gonna to try to zoom way down in I don't know if you can see them or not probably not but the jaw here it comes down oops, comes down to a to a point um, really very uh, very sharp point so um, if I could find a couple pieces of material here I'll, I'll kind of illustrate if it, you ima imagine this being the jaw it, it you know it comes down to the jaw face comes down to a to a sharp point kind of like like that, you know, imagine that bend up. But anyways, it's a sharp point. There's no radius there. And that's why we're able to bend that thing so hard to the 90, but it's also not acceptable because it'll crack and break. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this piece here. We're gonna put this piece in a machine in a, in a mill, and we're gonna mill off about a quarter inch of the face of this shoe right here. And then we're gonna weld in Look at that, you can see right there. This piece of drill rod, this is a quarter inch piece of drill rod. Nice and round and yummy and tasty. And you bend things around that and it's just good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna weld that rod and we're gonna give that shoe a radius. Or the, the shoe a radius. So now when we bend our metal, it's gonna bend around that radius. We're gonna have a super Gucci, ultra tasty bend radius on our piece and it's actually going to be a little bit bigger of a bend radius than this which is even better still um, this bend radius is acceptable for 2.5 but not for 32 so we're going to go with the bigger bend radius and then the smaller stuff will just get a bigger bend radius it won't hurt it, it'll just make it even less likely to crack or break so that's what's going to happen and I'll uh, I'm going to jump now we're going to go by the magic of uh, video to the machine shop where we're going to machine this this component off so for now I say hold on to your seat because we're going to fly across town and in just a second or two we'll be at the machine shop machining that. Okay, here we are at the mill and uh, Jim is setting the mill up so we can get it all centered up on what we're doing here. But I'm going to show you the clamps that we're using to hold this thing in position. So here's a clamp right here. We got the, uh, the shoe of the brake clamp down. And now uh, Jim's putting into the mill right there in the mill itself. He's putting a pin that he's going to use to zero out the uh, the shoe 
so it's perfectly perpendicular to the shaft, center line shaft of the mill. So this uh, this pin that's in there doesn't cut. It's just merely a, a tool guide to help him line all this up. And then you can see we got another clamp right here. And then we're using some high tech two by fours underneath to support it up. And uh, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. So once we get ready to start cutting, I'll shoot more and share that with you. Okay, as you can see, we got the mill set up and we're making our first pass um, down the leading edge of this shoe. We're only taking off 270 thousandths on this first pass, and the reason we're doing that is Jim wants to make get everything cleaned up before we get any more aggressive with it. We're probably going to make multiple, multiple passes, but. Uh, 27 thousandths. Did I say 27 thousandths? It's 27. What did I say? That last place is half a thousand. All right, okay, so 27 thousandths. Anyways, there it is moving down the line here. We're milling this piece off. Okay, here's a view from the back side, and you can see that the mill is just coasting along, doing its thing, it's not even working hard. You can see here that it's a uh, fully automatic situation, and it's it's kind of doing its thing there, as you can see. And uh, we're going to be getting to the end here. We got to watch it real close towards the end because we're going to have some clearance issues down there by the other hold down job. So uh, I'll come back when we get to there. In this view, you can see that cutter just doing its thing. It's, it's no problem, but we got a clearance issue with between the cutter head and that stud right there that's sticking up. So we got to make sure that we don't get into that. Okay, here we are making what, what, probably the second to last pass. You can see the material on the face of the uh, the shoe has been relieved, and uh, there goes a little cooling oil. And uh, we'll be making um, one more pass after this, possibly two. Okay, here we are making the final pass. It took 250 thousandths off of the face of this shoe here. And you can see the mill doing its thing. Looks good. Final pass happening right now. And there she is. Okay, we're back in the shop. I've welded it up. And we are ready to start using this brake to make material make our parts and uh, like we discussed yesterday at the mill we milled off the face of this shoe so I can weld in this quarter inch piece of drill rod right here so uh, you can see that's welded in I got five five welds on it to hold it it doesn't go the full length because our mill wasn't capable of milling this 36 inch piece full length so we're about 10 inches short but that's okay that leaves us some versatility down at the other end so we weld it in, weld it on either side first and in the middle and then split the difference to keep it from warping. And um, worked out pretty good, welded up really nice. I haven't used my welding machine in a couple years, so you know, I was kind of a little rusty with the first weld here. But uh, once I got going past that, I was good to go. And then all I have to do is put the machine back together and adjust everything up. So this, uh, this rod is parallel to the bending the bending anvil or whatever we call this piece here. I'm sure there's some people out there that have all the names of the particular parts of this brake, but nonetheless this is nice and uh, parallel and set back about about 32 thousandths of an inch, about the width of the material. It's set back from the edge so that it gives the material some place to be when it's all folded up. And uh, the quarter inch rod gives a nice, nice uh, 1 8 inch radius, which is a minimum bend radius for 032 material, 2024 T3, which is what we have, and uh, we're going to go ahead and bend a piece. Now, as I have a couple hundred of these to do, probably close to 250, 
of different sizes. Uh, there's only 82 of the 7 inch long ones, but there's multiple sizes. Um, what I did is I set up, because the material width here is the same for everyone, so I set up a, a stop inside, and it's just a piece of aluminum that's clamped to the, the back here, and then when you slide the piece in, it hits the stop and sets the depth. So you can see, slide it in, I'm hitting a stop right there. You slide this in to the stop. I got a little reference mark right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a black mark right there, and I use that just so um, I line them up in the same spot every time, just to make sure that they're as consistent as possible. So slide this into the stop, line it up with the mark, hold it, because when the shoe comes down, it comes down kind of like this, and it will actually slide your material. It'll push it back away from the stop, so you got to kind of hold it in position. And then just take and clamp it down, like so. Then you just grab, grab the uh, portion that rotates here, whatever we're going to call this, the anvil or whatever. And you rotate this around to about 90 or so. Maybe a little further because there is some spring back. You'll get a feel for it after you do it a little bit. Unlock it. And there we have a nice little 90 degree bend with a nice, look at that nice radius right in there. Just real nice radius. So, the brake cost me, like I said, I got this brake and the two toggle clamps, I threw those on the other bench, out the door for $211, I was with tax, and I used a 20% off any one item coupon. Um, if you sign up for Harbor Freight, which you should be, get those, uh, get those in the mail. And then I spent, uh, you know, four bucks on a piece of drill rod. Had a buddy, admittedly had a buddy that had a mill to mill off the face, but you know, even if even if you don't have a buddy and you have to take it to a machine shop, I can't imagine it's going to cost you, you know, much more than maybe 20 bucks. I mean, I don't know um, to get someone to mill it off. If it was me around the house, I wouldn't even go to a machine shop. I just lay out, I'd lay out a tape line and try to get it straight, and then I would take my handheld mini grinder and I. would I'd cut that quarter inch off of there and work it. It'd take me a day or so just to make sure, but I'd get it nice and clean. But, you know, I'm kind of funny that way. But definitely, uh, if you have a, access to a mill, that's the way to go. You know, weld that bad boy in there, get everything all straightened up, and kind of work the machine over, take all the little tweaks out of it, get it all nice and tight so it's not operating sloppily. And you'll have a nice little break for your shop for a couple hundred bucks. That's going to produce, you know, great little angles. And there is a ton of them. I mean, I've got just a ton of these things to do. So now I can sit in my shop and do them, and I've got the bend radiuses, and everything's perfect. So there you have it. Uh, that's how I did it. Hopefully that helps somebody uh, do, it, do the same thing or give you some idea to, to even improve upon what I did. So uh, until next time, we'll see you in the shop.